A mace was a weapon. Today, it is a symbol of authority carried by the senior academic officer or faculty member. On it are inscribed the Greek symbols for wisdom, benevolence, and courage, the characteristics of excellent leaders. Traditional academic dress derives from the gowns, caps, and hoods worn by medieval scholars. Regular use of the academic gown and hood to indicate fellows of the college dates to the University of Cambridge in the 13th century. The colors show the institution from which the wearer received an academic degree, along with the discipline and level of the degree. Some of the older institutions have colored gowns for special events and a black gown for less formal occasions. However, most use only the black gown. Bell-shaped sleeves with velvet stripes indicate a doctoral degree. Gowns for the recipients of master's degrees have a unique sleeve design, but no trim.
welcome to the graduation ceremonies of Paducah Community College. Everyone, please stand as the Paducah Community College Chorus, under the direction of Mr. Norman Wergler, sings our national anthem. Gentlemen, please remove your mortar boards. Ladies may do so if you wish. Welcome to this very special occasion for students, faculty, family, and friends. There are honored guests present this evening that I would like to recognize. First, Mrs. Rudell Orazine, wife of Judge Danny Orazine. And this year we are in a year of transition, and it is my honor to recognize the newly appointed West Kentucky Community and Technical College District Board. I would ask that each of you please stand as I call your name, but that we hold our applause until all have been introduced. Mr. Bruce Brockenborough. <laughs> Mr. Robert Emerson. Mr. B.A. Hamilton. Mr. Don Mitchell. Ms. Susan Nelson, Dr. Mary Lou Yates, Mr. Paul Ross, staff representative, and Mr. Paul Wood, faculty representative, Ms. Sherry Anderson, student representative. We look forward to this great year. As I introduce our platform guests, kindly hold your applause until all have been introduced. The Paducah Junior College Board of Trustees, Judge William Howerton, Chair. Ms. Ann Denton, Secretary. Ms. Ann Gwynn, At-Large Representative. Mr. Bruce Brockenborough. Mr. B.A. Hamilton. Judge Danny Orazine. Mr. Paul Ross, staff representative. Mr. Paul Wood, faculty representative. Ms. Sherry Anderson, student representative. Mr. Anton Reese, dean of student affairs. Mr. John Carrico, dean of business affairs. Dr. David Krieger, retiring faculty member. And Ms. Kathy Wood, retiring faculty member. We thank you all for your many contributions to this college. This college has a rich history in providing excellence in education to this community. First as Paducah Junior College, and then in 1968 as Paducah Community College. During the ensuing years, this college's enrollment has grown to over 3,300 students this fall. 
We have not only the traditional college classes on our campus, but also the University of Kentucky College of Engineering, and this fall, UK graduate programs. And, will we, and we will also be the home to the Challenger Learning Center opening this summer. A college of this quality did not happen by accident, but rather by the hard work, dedication, and commitment of a large group of people. It is my honor now to recognize the faculty of Paducah Community College. You are special in what you do. You are special in what you have brought to this college. Excellence in instruction, in distance learning, in technology, leadership development, and in other areas too numerous to mention. I want to personally recognize and thank you for the 11 years that I had the opportunity to spend as your Dean of Academic Affairs and to say to you now that I am truly honored to be your new president. Graduates, one of these days and probably before too long as you enter the workforce and as you go forward in the future, you will look back on your education at Paducah Community College and you will recognize or think about one of the faculty who helped you reach your goal, who helped you decide what those goals were and how to achieve them. Drop that faculty member a note. Let them know because those are the greatest rewards that we receive. So I ask each of you, graduates, family and friends, Join me in saying thank you and recognizing the faculty of Paducah Community College. Please stand. <laughs> At this time, I would also like to recognize Dr. David Krieger and Ms. Kathy Wood, and I would ask that they please stand. <laughs> Dr. Krieger joined Paducah Community College in 1969 teaching history, and Ms. Kathy Wood in 1970 teaching English. Dave Krieger and Kathy Wood are known in one word, and that is excellence. They have led this college in areas, again, too numerous to mention, outstanding instruction as faculty members and as leaders on this campus and across the state in committees, and both have served more than one term as division chair. Their work exemplifies the word teacher. They have the respect of their colleagues and the love of this college. They have set the model for us, and as they go forward into retirement, we will miss your presence on this campus, but your model will be the goal that we will try to achieve. Our best wishes go with you. I am both excited and honored to present what will be a first in PCC's history. The keynote speakers for the 2002 graduation ceremony will be the outstanding male and female student here at Paducah Community College. First, the outstanding male student is Brian Clore, who comes to us with a wide and varied background. This 1992 Fulton City High School graduate was a police officer for six years before deciding to pursue higher education. He was recently nominated to the Kentucky Community Technical System All Academic Team and is a member of the Phi Theta Honor Society, Phi Beta Lambda, and is a National Collegiate Business Merit Award winner. Brian has been very active with campus activities and served as one of our student ambassadors. 
After graduating today with his associate's degree in business technology, management option with distinction, he plans on transferring to Murray State University. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2001-2002 Outstanding Neil Brian Clore. Thank you, Dean Reese. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin by thanking all of our guests in the graduating class of 2002 for coming out tonight to celebrate the graduates and their accomplishments. This night has been a long time coming for me. I'm what we call a non-traditional student here at PCC. Basically what that means is I celebrated, I graduated high school several years ago. When I graduated high school, I did what many of the graduates sitting here did. I went on to college. I graduated from Fulton High School and went on to the University of Tennessee at Martin. I attended classes there for a semester and a half, and then in my 19-year-old wisdom, I decided college was not for me. So I left and spent the next few years serving the citizens of various communities as a firefighter and then moved on into law enforcement. By this time, I had grown a little older, and I think a little wiser, and I decided I, re decided I wanted to return to school. The problem was, there was always something interfering. There was always something to keep me from signing up, until one day I realized there would always be something in the way. I would always be able to find an excuse not to go. So I made up my mind I was just going to do it. I came out to PCC, and I signed up to take one summer course. It was basic public speaking with Jason Donner. And depending on how well I'm doing right now, he may or may not appreciate the fact I've <laughs> mentioned his name. From there, I moved on into the fall semester with one more class, writing one. After that semester, I was a full-time student. Once I started attending full-time, I realized how different PCC was from UTM. For starters, my instructors, for the most part, knew my name and who I was. I was a night student, and some of my classes had less than 10 students in them. The teachers took time to go into discussions with their students and actually worked one-on-one -on -one with us. This was great. It was like being in high school again, and it made me think, if there was ever a place to bridge the gap between high school and a university, this was the place. And after spending three years here, I cannot understand why every high school graduate does not come here first. And it's not only the high school graduates that benefit from here. I came to PCC as an adult with a full-time career and bills to pay. PCC allowed me the opportunity to set up my classes around my work schedule. And the extra time this instructor spent with me helped me to readjust to school life. I had to learn how to study again and basically how to be a student again. PCC allowed me to carry on a normal adult life while adapting to classes and attending college. As my college career forged on, I began to get involved in some of the extracurricular activities here at PCC. I was invited to join the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, as were all the graduates tonight wearing the gold stoles. I joined the Phi Beta Lambda Business Society. I became a student ambassador and student senate officer. I had no idea coming into PCC that there was so much here to do. Sometimes I got so busy with these other things, I forgot that I was a student and I had things like homework to complete. However, I believe I learned as much here outside the classroom as I did inside. And as I look out into my, the crowd of my fellow graduates, I hope that all of you gained as much from your time here as I did. I suppose what I'm trying to pull together here is that so many people see community colleges in such a negative light, when in reality, if we the graduates take a good look back at the time we spent here, I think we can say that that is false. I know the time I have spent here has not only given me an education, it has taken me from a time of discouragement and helped me to reestablish my self-esteem. I have discovered that leadership abilities and skills are not instilled at birth. They are taught and encouraged by people who believe in you. I learned the goal of PCC is not only to give students an education, but to give us the knowledge, skills, and abilities we need to succeed in today's world. And on that note, I would like to thank the entire faculty of PCC for their encouragement, leadership, time, and support. One of the great things about attending Paducah Community College is that the faculty actually has the time to spend with their students, and they want to spend that time with their students. I can say from attending a university that so many times students there get lost in the crowd to the teachers, 
That is definitely not the case here. I would also like to say there are a few instructors out there who deserve individual thanks. There have been more than a few days that I did not think I was going to make it through the past three years. However, someone was always there to push me along and get me on to the next day. I don't have time to name them all one by one, but they should know who they are. Each one of them saw my face on a regular basis, listened to my problems, and assured me that things were not so bad. So to them, I give my heartfelt thanks and let you know that your jobs are indeed worthwhile. And finally, I would like to thank the two individuals who have had the most impact on my life here the last two years, not only here at PCC, but also out in the real world. The last few years have seen some drastic changes to my personal life. I have experienced some hard times that left me wondering if I would get past them. From the support of God and my family, I found that I could overcome the hard times. And from the support of these two individuals, I found a new confidence in myself and discovered that I could not only overcome my obstacles, I could leave them behind and become a better, more productive, and successful person than I was before. So I say to Sandra Tucker, Counselor for Evening and Off-Campus Students, and Anton Reese, Dean of Student Affairs, if you ever wonder why you came to work every day, let me know and I will remind you. You are both role models in my eyes, and any success I am rewarded in the future, I know, began in your offices. So in closing, I would like to say how fortunate I've been to attend PCC. I have learned things here that I would never have learned anywhere else. I have made friends and connections that have helped to mold me not only into a more educated person, but a better person. I only hope that others passing through this institution have had the same positive experience as I have, even if you are only realizing it now. I don't know where you all are going next. I'll be returning to PCC for another semester and then moving on to a four-year university. But hopefully, what you have gained here will make whatever transitions you are making a little smoother. I hope you take what you have learned here and use it to grasp every opportunity that passes before you. Because if there is one thing I have learned, it is that opportunities are never lost. Someone will take the ones you miss. Thank you. The outstanding female student is Joan Umbles, who also comes to us with a wide and varied background. Joan is a Paducah Tillman High School graduate, she told me not to mention the year, <laughs> and worked at the USEC plant until 2000 before being laid off and coming to PCC. She received the Professional Business Woman Scholarship and is a member of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, the Black Affairs Council, and is a PCC student ambassador. The PCC student ambassadors play a vital leadership and support role with prospective students, including campus stores, recruitment visits to area high schools, and serves as host for various campus special events, including the Focus Series. Joan Umbles will receive an associate in science degree with high distinction today. She plans on transferring to Murray State University and major in elementary education. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2001-2002 outstanding female student, Joan Umbles. Paducah Community College graduating class of 2002, my peers, I wish to extend to you a heartfelt congratulations on this very special time in your lives. Every one of you are to be commended for a job well done. A few weeks ago, I was informed that I had been selected as Female Outstanding Student of the Year. I never dreamed that my college career would ever bring me such an honor or that I would even be considered for such a blessing. I thank the individuals who were involved in that selection process and my teachers who were so instrumental in imparting their knowledge to me. I also thank my family and my friends for their prayers and support. But I feel, though, that this distinction is more representative than subjective, as every one of you graduating today are students of the year. You are, without doubt, outstanding, or you wouldn't be here today. At this time, graduates, I would like you to listen intently as I read one of my favorite passages. There is a time 
and purpose for everything under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what was planted. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to gather stones and a time to scatter them. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to keep and a time to cast away. I'm sure that you're familiar with these selected phrases from the good book I have just spoken. Now, I would like to take each one of these phrases and briefly relate them to events which led me to PCC and also a few of my experience that I have had here as well. A time to be born and a time to die. The phrase, a time to be born, has to do with the opportunity I'm utilizing to go back to college so that I can enhance my education and become an elementary school teacher, something that I subconsciously wanted to do since I was a child. Every aspect of college, from the interaction with different people to some of the grueling courses I've had to undergo, have given me the chance to grow and learn more about the world in which I live. A time to plant and a time to uproot what was planted. This time in my life has to do with the date of June the 29th, almost two years ago, when I was tapped on the shoulder and told that my eight years of service as a clerk was no longer needed at the USEC plant. That position and all of my jobs prior to that one were all related to the secretarial clerical fields. I was okay in those roles in the respect that they paid okay and had good benefits. I was also in the company of great folks, but something was just missing. For me, those positions I filled were only functional, and so I had an overwhelming desire to do something different with my life. So when I was tapped and told to move on, I gathered my things and did so with no questions asked. And I did just that. I moved on. A time to tear down and a time to build. My college career actually began when I was still an employee at USEC, where I was only to t able to take a class here and there. Mr. Halford's English 101 class is where I learned how to write. It also set a good foundation for full-time college life that was to come. After the downsizing, I knew my first semester as a non-traditional full-time student would be rough. I predicted correctly that the subject matter in Dr. Okoji's biology class would be difficult, but somehow with God's grace, I got through it. I incorrectly predicted, though, that Lisa Stevenson's CIS 100 class would be a piece of cake. <laughs> After the first day, I realized I had to undertake a mental metamorphosis before I was going to get through that one. On the first day of class, we had a time test to see how many of us were able to type 20 words per minute. After I typed about 72 words per minute, I felt this class would be a breeze, an easy A. Needless to say, the class involved more than typing. My preconception about the subject matter was wrong. We had to study the configuration of a computer from the inside out before we got to play with the keyboard. After I just about bombed the first pop quiz, she sprung on us. I was more than ready to take the rest of those quizzes in my sleep if necessary. Taking her class made me a better student because it taught me to be prepared and made me start taking all of my classes seriously. It also taught me a lesson in looking through my textbook before the first day of classes. A time to gather stones and a time to scatter them. Some of the stones that I am gathering is obtaining knowledge other stones that I have gathered are leadership skills. By the time my second semester came around, I wanted to become involved in some of the various activities that are offered on this campus. So I joined Phi Theta Kappa and the Black Affairs Council. 
I received letters inviting me to apply for student ambassadorship. I told myself I was already doing enough and didn't think I wanted to go there. But Gail Ridgway, who at one time was my advisor, encouraged me to fill out an application after speaking with her one day, so I did. After an interview process, I got one of the positions. And graduates, being a student ambassador has given me the opportunity to enhance my God-given people skills and be of service to other students, the faculty, and the community. I have undoubtedly had the time of my life, and I'm thankful I took that step. We were very fortunate to have Sandra Tucker as our head, who was always so pleasant and who kept us in line. These are some of the stones I have collected thus far since I have been a student at PCC. I will continue to gather my stones when I begin Murray State this fall, and I hope all of you graduating here will also keep gathering your stones by going to a four-year college so that when we finish, we can proudly scatter our stones when we begin our careers by implementing our acquired knowledge and leadership back into the community and our world. A time to weep and a time to laugh. It takes sacrifice, dedication, and full immersion into our studies to be a good, successful student in the college arena. We have had to give up some of our activities in order to study. We have had to also sacrifice by being the guinea pig of the class when we raised our hand to ask the instructor the question others were afraid to ask. We have made a conscious effort to stay on task and to make school a number one priority. So now is the time for you to laugh and pat yourselves on the back as you sit here in your caps and gowns waiting to get the diploma you have worked so hard for. A time to keep and a time to cast away. The time that we have been students at PCC is a time we will always remember. Many of us have sat in classes together and have made new friends. We will miss one another and will have many fond memories. But we all have to also look to moving on to the next phase of our lives, meaning continuing our education. Some of you will be attending college out of state, and some will stay in Kentucky. Some might even begin their careers. Whatever the case may be, keep moving forward. Don't stop now. Make the best of this time in your lives by being all that you can be. Thank you. Thank you, Brian and Joan, for those words of inspiration and encouragement. It was an honor to hear you both speak at the commencement address tonight. Will the candidates please rise? Dr. Vesey, I present the candidates for graduation and I certify on behalf of the faculty that they have successfully completed all of the requirements for their respective degrees. The first row of graduates may proceed to the stage. All others may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, as the names of the graduates are read, please note that those graduating with distinction have achieved a grade point average of a 3.4 to a 3.6. Those graduating with high distinction have earned a 3.6 or higher. Students wearing the gold stoles are members of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Graduating with an Associates in Arts degree, Brittany Michelle Hogan.
Fonda Gay Beach. Raymond Larry Brown. <laughs> Carrie Ann Burns. <laughs> Michelle Denise Cousins. Lajona A. Dukes. <laughs> Patricia A. Feaser. <laughs> Catherine Michelle Ford Tapscott. <laughs> Charlotte Renee Goddard. Mindy Cheryl Harmon. Sarah Helton. Natalie Beth Higdon. Barbara Hodge. Rebecca Lee Jackson. Alan Jerome Geeter. Nicole R. Johnson. Tamala Lene Lambert. Sherry E. Lindsay. Michael Shane Mills. Joseph Patterson. Michael Wayne Pretty. Gifford Blyton Roberts. Odessa Townsley. Alan Barrett Treese. Graduating with an Associates in Science degree. Amber Ray Gigenbach. <laughs> Brandon Scott Caton. Heather Renee Dunn. Arlene F. Elliban. Arlene is graduating with a perfect 4.0. Brian Edward Gresham. Kimberly Ann Griggs. Derek Matthew Hamby. Joan Umbles. Donna 
Tracy James. Martin D. Carr. Vratislav Joseph Kaisler. Timothy Troy Locke. Walter Wayne Smith. Lucinda S. Stowe. John Derek Stultz. Jake H. Vaughn. Regina Skurlock Weeks. <laughs> Donald E. Whiteley. Graduating with an Associates in Applied Science, Business Technology, the Accounting Option, Lee Ann Riley. Christina A. Fairchild. Michelle Lee Kunkel. Elizabeth K. Strahan. Elizabeth is also receiving an Associates in Arts degree. Under the management option, Brian K. Clore. Linda Holt. Graduating with an Information Technology Network Administration Option Microsoft Track, Crystal Lee Reed. <laughs> Graduating with the Associates in Applied Science Degree Nursing, Amber H. Allen. <laughs> Patricia L. Bowles. Alicia D. Burgess. Tana Shea Cooper. Rhonda K. Darnell. Desiree F. Gunder. Mindy Carroll Hall. Brandy Marie Hargrove. Tony T. Howard. C Celeste Jane Kilcoyne. Rhonda J. Meadows. Jennifer Lynn Pig. Holly B. Ray. Minda Fight Reed. Lynette Rogers. Amy Brooke Terry. Graduating with an Applied Science degree, Office Systems. Debbie Durbin Albritton.
Brandy L. Goodrich Ballard. Nancy L. Belt. Nancy Sue Breedenbach. Teresa Ann Dalton. Sarah Jo Gordon. Linda S. Haney. Eva B. Kelly. Stephanie Carol Knowles. Brenda Robertson. Deborah Lynn Russell. Angela Shaw. Physical therapist assistant, Laura Ton Brayboy. LaDonna Joe Campbell. Kyle Matthew Cox. Kimberly Ann Sample. Amy Lynn Sawyer. Natasha Marie Stevenson. Will the graduates please rise? By virtue of the power vested in me by the University of Kentucky and the Kentucky Community and Technical College System and the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I hereby confer upon you the associate degree. You may move your tassels to the left side and congratulations. Congratulations. You may be seated. It is now a sincere pleasure for me to present these next two awards as they go to longtime professional colleagues and friends. The first is the Phelps Award for Excellence in Teaching. This was established by Clyde and Linnell Boyles. The intent of the award was to emphasize quality and excellence and competence in teaching within the liberal arts area. This year's recipient is Mr. Paul Wood. Mr. Wood has taught English at Paducah Community College for 32 years. During that time, he's done an outstanding job, and he has certainly had the student's intellectual growth in mind. One student wrote, Mr. Wood, he has made us reach a little deeper, try to evaluate what we believe and why. 
Mr. Wood's interest in student success is also manifested in other roles. He is a dual credit coordinator for the college, meaning that he works with area high school administrators and high school faculty in bringing our college classes to the senior year. He is also faculty representative to the Paducah Junior College Board of Trustees and the newly formed KCTCS Western Kentucky District Board. He also represents the Kentucky Community and Technical College System on the Program Development Committee, which is very important during this time of consolidation between the technical and the community colleges, because this means that we will work toward a combined curriculum and maintain standards throughout the state. He has also been in other leadership roles and has served as a division chair for this college from 1991 to 2000. He has my sincere congratulations and uh, a well-deserved honor. The second award was established by the Paducah Junior College Board of Directors or Trustees for the outstanding faculty member in a technical discipline. This year's recipient and congratulations go to John Voss. John has been instrumental in the program development area. He has served the Information Technology Committee and chaired that throughout the state and worked on curriculum and created partnerships with Microsoft, Cisco, and the National Science Foundation. John is one of the faculty selected to develop courses throughout the state for secondary education institutions. These courses provide instruction in Cisco and Nortel. It is because of John's efforts that this college is a leader in not only the state but in the nation in instructional technology. John's activities with the National Science Foundation has meant that this college has received thousands of dollars for software, hardware, and professional development training for this college. John's most recent activities means that the college will be a mobile training center to educate and train area high school faculty. So our thanks, John, and congratulations. Graduates, as president of Paducah Community College, it is an honor for me to wish you much success in life. But I would say to you, before you go on with your education, before you go out into the workforce, or you go back to the job that you currently hold, take the time to think about and reflect on what success in life really means to you. I would say to you to put meaning into both your professional and your personal life. Money and titles are certainly nice, but real feelings of accomplishment come from having a life filled with purpose and maybe a cause. This is not something that you stumble across or that you win like a prize in a treasure hunt, but something that you build into your life. It comes from the past associations, hopefully at this college. It comes from your experiences, what you believe in, what your values are. And success is not something that comes by accident but remember, success is built on one choice at a time. But tonight, you certainly are successful. I heard many cheers, and, and our congratulations, congratulations certainly go with you. So tonight, enjoy your success, 
and I hope that you will return to your campus because it is your campus. We hope you will come back for additional classes or for one of our many events. Again, congratulations to each of you, and we want to give you another round of applause. At this time, would everyone please stand and sing along with our community chorus on My Old Kentucky Home. recessional goes by and please everyone join us in the student lounge as we honor our graduates with a reception.